Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Wa ashadu an la ilahi lallahu wahduhu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alihi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ask his peace and blessings upon his servant and his final messenger, Muhammad, upon his family and his companions and those who follow them in faith and practice until the last day. Thumma amma bad, brothers and sisters, it's a pleasure to be with you today, alhamdulillah. And I congratulate everyone for making the effort to be part of this convention, mashallah, where we are commemorating 50 years of service from Islamic Circle of North America, ICNA. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has decreed all things, that we don't believe that anything happens as coincidence are uh, just as random circumstance, but everything happens in accordance with the infinite wisdom and the plan of the Creator, the one who is perfect in knowledge and absolute in his authority, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about volunteerism, that the ones whom they are prepared to give from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. And this is the core of volunteerism. And this is something that we are, of course, commanded to do again and again and again and again in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, this is how we reach to gaining a true meaningful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدْ أَعُوذِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ لَن تَنَارُوا بِرُّ حَتَّى تُنْفِكُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ al ayah That you and I, that we will not gain the quality of bir, that we will not reach that level of goodness, of piousness, of awareness of the Creator, of having the true and the real understanding of the meaning of life in this world until we give from that which we love. And mashallah, tabarakallah, we know that the companions of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, that they are the ones whom, that they embodied the understanding of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they learn directly from the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. One of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, may Allah be pleased with him, when he heard this ayah, and this was the, this was the habit of the, of the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, may Allah be pleased with each and every one of them, that when the Quran was being revealed to them over that period of 23 years in different situations and circumstances that when they were introduced to a new ayah, they immediately wanted to understand it from the understanding of the Prophet Wasallam, and they immediately wanted to put it into practice. So when this companion, may Allah be pleased with him, heard this ayah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to himself that the most beloved property or the most beloved thing which I possess is a garden, a bayruha. And he went to the messenger alayhi salatu salam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, that I give this garden in sadaqah for the pleasure of Allah and his messenger alayhi salatu salam, that do with it as you see fit. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he told it then, take it then and divide it amongst your relatives. So when we talk about that charity or that volunteerism, that sadaqah begins at home, then this is the example that we learn from the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and his sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'een, and that it expands from there. 
So mashallah, we know that ikna and ikna relief and gain peace and why Islam and helping hand and the umbrella organizations of Islamic Circle of North America, that this institution has evolved, mashallah, over the last 50 years. And indeed, it began with serving the needs of the Muslim community here in the United States. And we know that many of the, the brothers and sisters whom they were the, the core of the foundation of ICNA, that they were immigrants from other countries. But now, of course, that dynamic, that demographic has evolved and changed. If I could just take a moment to see that just by a show of hands, how many brothers and sisters in the audience that they immigrated to the United States from another country? Just, just raise your hand. Don't be shy. <laughs> how many that they were born and raised in this country, but they accepted Islam at a mature age? Raise your hand. And how many were born in this country into Muslim families from Muslim parents, and this is their home? Raise your hand. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So this is the reality of the ummah here in the United States today. And subhanAllah, we listened in the khutbah from our brother, Dr. Javed, jazahullah khair, that he mentioned about the climate that we are challenged with here in the United States. This climate of hatred, this climate of ignorance, this climate of misunderstanding regarding our beloved deen and our beloved messenger Muhammad Wasallam, and who we are as an ummah, a community here in the midst of our fellow citizens and neighbors here in the United States. And we are the ones whom we have to be the ways and means through which we push back against all of this negativity. And we can look and draw from the example of our beloved Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because when he returned from the cave, Ghar al Hira, when he returned after that first experience of revelation, unsure about what had happened to him. When he returned seeking comfort and solace from his beloved wife, Khadija radiallahu anha, and told her to cover me up, and he was trembling and, and perspiring and unsure of what had happened, then what is the first thing that she told him? Indeed, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forsake you that you are the one that you make good relations with your family, that you keep the ties of kinship, that you feed the hungry, that you help the traveler and the wayfarer, that you make any good, good judgments and, and, and mediation amongst the people. So the Prophet Wasallam had established these qualities in his life, in his 40 years amongst his people in Mecca, and when the revelation began to come to him, when it was clear to him that he had been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the seal of the prophethood, and that he had been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as rahmatul alameen, as a mercy for all the worlds, then he began his task, he met his challenge beginning from his inner circle, beginning with his wife, Khadija radiallahu anha, whom we recognize and honor as the first Muslimah. His good friend Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, his cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, and his inner circle, and of course, it spread from there. And here we are, brothers and sisters. Here we are, 1,400 and some odd years later, in this country, in this society, the United States of America, and we have a similar challenge. The Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, <clears throat> he could have never met that challenge if he was not ready to give from himself everything that he possessed. 
his intellect, his patience, his character, his skills, his time, his wealth. He was ready to volunteer and give everything for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through those tireless efforts, and of course the hidayah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then the tireless efforts of the Messenger والسلام, that slowly and slowly and slowly that the hidayah began to spread by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with all of the hardship, with all of the difficulty, <clears throat> with all of the challenges that the Prophet والسلام, faced, we know that after the short period of 23 years that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he showed him the result of all of that effort. So brothers and sisters, we are his ummah. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that he has sent the Prophet sallallahu that I have not sent you except as a mercy for all the worlds. He has also told us so we have been raised up by Allah Subhanahu as the best ummah for the benefit of mankind. So what does that mean for us? That means does that mean that we can have an, uh, an, an effect or an impact on all of mankind, wherever they are spread throughout the, the, the earth? No, the Prophet وسلم, that he never left the Arabian Peninsula after the Risala came to him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the result in that effort, put the result in that sacrifice. And mashallah, tabarakallah, we know what the, uh, the reality of the ummah is today, over one billion strong in every corner of the earth. So brothers and sisters, yes, we are facing enormous challenges. We are facing challenges throughout the globe. But you and I, who we live here in the United States, whom our children are being born here, we have the challenge of establishing institutions that are going to be a true manifestation of the beauty of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is at the core of the work of ikna and ikna relief. As you may know that ikna relief is an organization which is devoted to domestic relief work that our efforts are targeted and focused on serving humanity here in the communities in which we live. Beginning with our brothers and sisters in Islam and of course including and expanding and reaching out to our brothers and sisters in humanity, our neighbors, our fellow citizens that we deal with every day. And those whom they are our colleagues at work they are our subordinates, our superiors in our professions. They are our clients, our business partners, our teachers, or our students. That we have to be the ones who are prepared to step out of our comfort zone and volunteer. Step out of our comfort zone and give from what Allah SWT has given us for His pleasure knowing that through serving humanity, we serve the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's mentioned in authentic narration on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. In the English meaning of the narration, he said that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, or in one riwayah, yani two men, they came to the Prophet والسلام, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, ayyi nasin ahabbu illallah. O Messenger of Allah, which people are most beloved by Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ replied, Ahabbu nas ilallah and fa'ahum nas. That the most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones whom they bring the most benefit for mankind. And when we examine this statement of the Prophet ﷺ, we reflect upon it for just a moment 
that indeed who brought more benefit to mankind than Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. The one through which the guidance, the final and the permanent miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Quran, that it reaches the hearts and the minds of human beings through the countenance of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. And that Quran is the greatest benefit that any human being can receive. So we know that the Prophet وسلم, indeed is the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his personality, his countenance, his life, his character, which was described by Aisha radiallahu anha as the living Quran, that it is indeed the greatest benefit for mankind. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for him to live on this earth for a limited amount of time. And we are the ones who 1,400 some odd years later are coming after. So brothers and sisters, we have to meet that challenge of being ready to spend for the pleasure of Allah, to give for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to volunteer from our time, our wealth, our skills, our, our circumstances, so that we can bring good to the society in which we live. Yes, our hearts are with our brothers and sisters wherever they may be, but where can we bring impact, true impact, is when we are engaged right here in the communities where we live. MashaAllah, we have the mayor of Baltimore that will be joining us shortly, inshallah ta'ala. She should know that indeed the Muslims are the ones whom they are bringing the khair, the good, the benefit to the society. She should know that the Muslims are feeding the hungry, that the Muslims are giving the opportunity for medical care for those whom they cannot afford it, that the Muslims are coming to the aid and the service of those whom they have come to this country as refugees and they are dealing with a language barrier, dealing with culture shock, dealing with all of the challenges that they face that we are taking them by the hand and helping them and letting them know that we are their brothers and sisters. That when the disaster happens, that when there is a fire, a flood, a hurricane, a tornado, a disaster man-made or from Allah SWT otherwise, that we are the ones that want to go and help and be the first to come to the aid of those in need regardless of their language, regardless of their color, regardless of their religion, because they are our brothers and sisters in humanity. This is what the Prophet ﷺ has taught us. This is the legacy that he has left for his ummah. This is how we will establish ourselves here in this country. So mashallah, Ikna Relief is doing all of these things by the grace and mercy of Allah SWT, and then the help and support of brothers and sisters just like you. Probably many of you have already volunteered to help us in our efforts. Probably many of you have you know, raised your hands and made dua that Allah SWT you know, be with us and guide us and protect us, that you have given us from your time, your wealth, your money. And we need you, brothers and sisters, to continue to do so and even increase in doing so. So inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to call upon each one of you to stop by our booth in the bazaar. And inshallah ta'ala, you don't have to, um, to buy anything. But inshallah ta'ala, we want you to come. We want you to sign up. We want you to be a volunteer. We want you to join in this effort. We want you to be a part of this spirit of volunteerism. Because when we come together and we work together for the pleasure of Allah, we can indeed bring about change in this society. We can remove the veils of ignorance regarding who we are as the Ummah Muhammad Wasallam, and while doing so, we will be making a mountain, inshallah ta'ala, of ajr prepared for us when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you for coming and for being part of this event. And inshallah ta'ala, while you are here, please take full advantage of all of the opportunities. And inshallah ta'ala, I just want to mention one thing before I get pulled away here, is that, mashallah, the Prophet sallallahu he taught us that we should 
afshu salam bainana we should say yani salam often and create an environment of peace and love amongst us so we have an opportunity here to do what Ibn Umar used to do may Allah be pleased with him and his father he used to go to the marketplace and one time he told his companion come let us go to the marketplace and his companion told him what is it that you want to to do there he said i just want to go so that i can give the salam to those people that i know and those that i do not know so mashallah when you have the opportunity you see somebody in the elevator or close quarters with them in the hallway maybe you don't know them but take the opportunity to give them a smile and give them salam because this is from the spirit of volunteerism and it begins at home it begins with each and every one of us jazakum allah khairan wa baraka la fikum aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiruhu inna allaha laghafurur rahim